Hon. David Parker. Mr Speaker, there remains much to be investigated arising from the Nikki Hager book. The Inspector General of Intelligence and Security showed last week the politicisation of the SIS by the head of the SIS and the Prime Minister's own staff in his office. What was written off by the Prime Minister as a left-wing conspiracy during the election was proven to be true, underhand tactics being used by the Prime Minister and the SIS. National was cynical enough on the day of the release of that report to drop two others, including the report by Justice Chisholm into Judith Collins. Now, that report found that Judith Collins did not undermine the SFO, found that there was no probative in it, uh, evidence in that regard. It didn't inquire into whether Judith Collins had been improper in respect of Oravida, whether she had a personal conflict of interest there, financial one. It didn't inquire into whether it was proper of her to pass information about public servants to Slater, and it didn't inquire as to whether the other allegations as to undermining the SFO were correct. Those matters were all outside the terms of reference. The report didn't exonerate Judith Collins in respect of those other matters, and the report doesn't exonerate anyone else in respect of what may have been happening in respect of the undermining of the Serious Ford Office. Now, what do we now know? We know that thousands of dollars were being paid every month via Carrick Graham to Mr Slater. Presumably, thousands of dollars were also being paid to Carrick Graham himself. What were both of them doing? Well, they were both undermining the serious fraud office. Who were they doing it for? We do not yet know who they were doing it for. It looks like they may have been doing it for Mr Hotchins. Why would Mr Hotchins have been interested in doing that? Well, he was being investigated as to whether he should be charged with criminal offences following the half a billion dollars of losses suffered through Hanover, Hanover Finance failing. He was being investigated at, a, at the time by the Serious Fraud Office. I have had two people make worrying allegations to me. One is a former staff member of the Serious Fraud Office who told me at the time that the Serious Fraud Office commenced their investigation a former advisor to Hotchins contacted this person and said, Hotchins plays a rough game, you watch out, he will use underhand tactics to undermine the serious fraud office and their staff. The second allegation I have had made to me was that Mr Hotchins uh, used uh, underhand tactics to uh, uh, take out some of the potential witnesses against him in respect of his conduct uh, by Hanover. Now, I can't name either of those sources, and I can't prove those allegations to be true, and they are both hearsay allegations to me. But these allegations must be investigated. We've seen in respect of the SIS uh, matters that there was uh, fire behind the smoke, and in respect of these allegations, we know that thousands of dollars were pro presumably being paid by Hotchins to Carrick Graham uh, and Slater uh, and Cathy Odgers in respect of their efforts to undermine the Serious Fraud Office. What we don't know is whether those actions were criminal and whether there was a criminal conspiracy. I made a complaint to the police some two, over two months ago in respect of that. The only information I've had back other than to inquire whether I had more evidence uh, was a, a line in the Chisholm report to say that the allegations in respect of Judith Collins weren't being looked to any further, but it looks like no further actions are being inquired into. Mr Speaker, these are serious allegations. They must be looked seriously by the authorities. We've seen the politicisation of the SIS. We must make sure that the police have not been politicised. They were happy enough to inquire into the T-tapes to cooperate with the Prime Minister to deem Mr Ambrose guilty despite the fact that he had two arguable defences and yet we don't have the police looking at these most serious allegations as to whether the other allegations in the Hager book are true. Indeed, Mr Hager, and if it weren't for his efforts, none of the SIS stuff would have come out and none of this other stuff would have been investigated. He's the one that's been raided. He's the one that's suffered search warrants and yet neither Mr Slater, Ogers, uh, or uh, Mr Hotchins or the others like Carrot Graham seem to be investigated by the police and I don't think that's good enough.